Hey everyone, Dylan here from Iceberg TV. Today we're back with another episode in the Simon Says Disc Golf Forum series, where I try tips from pro players and disc golf coaches. In the first episode, we revisited kind of ancient history, an old Simon Lazat distance clinic, backhand clinic, that he did about seven to eight years ago. And in the second episode, we tried a bunch of tips from the disc golf spin doctor. And what I found out was that Simon was kind of teasing me with what positions I needed to be in to throw a good backhand. But his coaching cues for me weren't great to help me actually get there. So I had to turn to a disc golf coach's YouTube channel, Disc Golf Spin Doctor, and he helped me get into a lot better positions. So I was able to take what Simon showed me and then use Disc Golf Spin Doctor's coaching cues to help me get there. So I worked on that for about probably a couple weeks, at least a good 10 days. And then I watched a Disc Golf Form video from Bodanza Disc Golf and Nick Crush. And there was one thing in that video that they did together that really resonated with me. Uh, spinal flexion. Are so you thinking you anything keep... about like anterior or posterior tilt of your pelvis? A little bit posterior would okay. be ideal, especially if you're in hyzer tilts. Yeah. You can create a hyzer tilt posture. If you look at Eagle and AB mm -hmm. on their walk up, they do it really well. Yeah. Where their hyzer tilt is basically butt back and abs flexed. Mm -hmm. And that allows you to kind of wrap your body around the disc, so to speak. So right here you can see my anterior core muscles are pretty engaged. Mm -hmm. It's gonna it's gonna minimize the chance of going into spinal extension. Yeah. And I just like to lock into a depressed and protracted scapula to make sure that's good. And then my elbow is slightly above the disc. So if I start here, I'm generally gonna be in a pretty good position when I do my coil. And it was the position of the like the core and the spinal column. I used to throw, and this was very intentional. Um, I think because I have a weightlifting background. I used to throw very upright and I would be in a lot of the right positions, but I'd be very upright and tall with my spine in a straight line. Now, Nick Crush said, just to break a pretty long video down into layman's terms, a lot of the best distance throwers and a lot of the best backhand throwers actually crunch their core and tilt their pelvis forward to activate their core during that backhand throw. So there's a crunched position that a lot of these players find themselves into. And you see a lot of players like Anthony Barella, Casey White are two really good examples of it. When they're doing their walk up, they're almost walking up like hunched over a bit. And I always wondered why I, I felt like that doesn't look super athletic, but I tried it and I've been doing it for at least a week. And I feel like that tip has immensely helped my backhand. The other thing that I've really been working on is Keeping my wrist curled, which is something that I think I need to do for the long term, just to make sure that my wrist gets curled at some point during this throw, but also keeping my arm curled. So even when I'm here, honestly, even when I'm reaching back, I'm still keeping it curled until the very last second. And that seems to be really, really helpful for me. What you do with your arm and your elbow early in the throw doesn't superly seem to matter as long as this elbow on that pull through stays high and you're not like reaching up too high or too low. But there's a lot of wiggle room. Like a lot of good players reach up here and then find the right position. A lot of players reach here and then find the right position. I feel like for me, keeping this arm curled for as long as possible seems to be helpful. And I'm definitely not removing the reach back, which is something that I have technically tried in the past. But what I'm finding with this is it's delaying my reach back. So I'm getting a plant and then a like a like a, that springy kind of effect where that arm is going back at the absolute last second to get that kind of Simon Lazat slingshot effect that he described in his tutorial. So it's like all these things that we're trying to do are really a goal to just wind up at the end of this thing throwing like Simon, which I probably will never be able to do, but we can get as close as we can. <laughs> we'll get as close as we can. So I wanna show you guys what I've been working on. We'll do a couple of throws here, but just really trying to focus on everything we've been learning. Pretty cold out here. Fingers are definitely hurting a bit, but that was first throw of the day with the evidence. Went pretty far, about 330, 340 probably.
One pro tip that I got from Scott Stokely when I did like a 20 to 30 minute lesson with him. I am a notorious like elbow dipper. And before we get into that tip from Scott Stokely, I just want to give a quick shout out to Disc Golf Deals USA. If you want to save the most money on your disc golf discs, you can save an additional 10% on anything over at the website by accessing my storefront. The link is in the description below. We've got all the new Discraft glows, all the Innova new Proto glows. We've got tons of awesome MVP and Axiom custom stamps, all the new Discraft stuff, tons of amazing drops, the new Swirl D-Line P1X, so many good things over on the website. I'm sure there's something on there that you're going to want to get for yourself and you can save money while you do it by using my storefront. The link is in the description below. The videos on this channel would not be made possible to upload as consistency as I do without Disc Golf Deals USA. So go check out the site, use my storefront, go get yourself something nice. Let's get back to the Scott Stokely tip. Everything looks good. And then I break down right here and go like this. Whoop. That, when I'm doing that, it's been some of the worst throws I've ever thrown in my entire life. Scott Stokely gave me a brilliant coaching cue that basically helps you not do that at all. So if you feel like you're dipping, I'm a buyer, I'm a believer in the camp that if you're making a mistake, the best way to fix it is to overcorrect in the other direction. When you're dipping, you're throwing down by your waist and that's not good. So what's the best way to overcorrect that? It's to actually try and pull up by your face. If you're someone who dips really bad and you try to pull up by your face, you're gonna wind up about here for most of us. <laughs> the odds you hitting yourself in the face are, I guess never zero, but they are certainly low. So let's try and pull across the face here and see if that makes a difference to make sure we're really not dipping. So now we need to get the core crunch plus the face pull. That's smacked. And ever since I made all these form changes, the last few actual scored rounds I've played have been some of the best, most fun, and most consistent rounds I've ever played. And I'm still throwing a full trilogy bag I'm curious to see how I play with my main bag, but at the moment, I really feel like my game is one of the best spots it's ever been in. And it's because I feel like I've really been putting in the work and like really doing everything I can do to get better. Let's see if we can get a good launch with the strive here. That seemed good. I'm not sure what that's going to look like on video, but I feel like that's kind of the form that I'm looking for. Everything about that felt pretty good. Maybe need a little better plant. Um, last driver we have today is going to be the flow. <sighs> I mean, they're going nice and far. Very, very nice looking shots. Maybe we'll just throw, I guess I have a Saint and I have a Vandal. We'll put them a little higher, see if we can't get a little bit better shot shape. Pull, pulling across the face here as well. Ooh, okay. Man, if I threw a Strive on that one, that would've went really, really far. And our last one of the day is gonna be the Saint. Then I'll give you guys some closing thoughts, but I wanted to give you guys like an update that don't worry, I've still been working hard on everything we've been talking about. I just didn't want to come on camera and share it with you guys until I knew I was either going to be throwing farther or throwing more consistently. And I definitely feel like I'm throwing more consistently. And I definitely think I'm throwing better and I've gotten better since I started this video series. So I wanna wait till I saw results to actually share anything with you guys. Ah, <sighs> oh, don't hit the tree. Oh man. That saint would have went so far if it didn't hit the tree. So today's video was pretty raw. I kind of just threw everything at you guys that I've been working on. I feel like the results are there. 
I didn't necessarily throw anything for a like a new distance PR or whatever. Um, a lot of these discs I just threw, they're going farther than I used to be able to throw those specific discs. Like I'm really starting to push those mids like well into the mid 300s. The fairways I'm starting to push well into those like 350 range and then those distance drivers. I'm, I am starting to hit 400 a lot more consistently and I'm starting to hit it with golf lines out on the course. I'm getting birdies I've never gotten before. I'm throwing shot shapes I've never thrown before and I'm seeing the results out on the course and I'm really excited to continue to share scored rounds with you guys. But I feel like just trying to relay all this stuff to you guys that I've been working on. Hopefully something resonates with you guys because I've been working on a lot of stuff and I feel like it's been paying massive dividends. I've been having more fun. I've been throwing better. I've been beating my friends. I've, I've been beating my friends that I usually have a very hard time beating and I've been beating them a lot easier than I ever have before. So that's where my game is at. And I feel like it's all thanks to, you know, people like Simon for doing those clinics, people like the disc golf spin doctor um, to help us understand that real versus feel putting us in the right positions, giving us the coaching cues to work off of. And then people who do like the most nitty gritty deep dive into the musculature of what's actually going on with your body during the throw, like Nick Crush. I mean, that guy has been an absolute gem in the disc golf community. He should probably be a kinesiologist or something super fancy somewhere because that guy's really smart, really intelligent, and really knows what he's talking about. And then just watching I've been super receptive, like even if I see an amateur player on Instagram, like pausing their form, seeing what they do well and seeing, you know, slow mowing the video and seeing if even amateur players are doing something that I need to be doing. So that's kind of where I got that sort of that super exaggerated arm curl. And I feel like that's been really helpful for me to plant earlier, reach back later and get that kind of slingshot effect that I'm looking for. Stay humble, live with gratitude. I will see you guys in the next episode and take care.